Hi and welcome to episode 12 of the This Is Repertage podcast. My name is Alan Law, I'm the founder of TIR and I'm a wedding photographer myself too. Today I'm so excited to have the fab Frank Boutonnet. Hailing from France, Frank has been winning a huge number of awards from all the different associations for the past 10 years and has so much to share with us, including three major tips for submitting to awards in general, including why he specifically keeps entering, how he went from teaching French in America to photojournalism and weddings, his relationship with a fellow and also very talented wedding photographer, Rocio Vega, the ghosting trend and how this affects him and photographers all over the world and so much more. Oh, and by the way, I've left a little mistake at the beginning in on purpose because, well, yeah, we all make mistakes. Hey, Frank, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, Alan, thank you for calling me and inviting me. Super excited. Oh, oh cool. Oh, that bit. Actually, let's just do that a bit again, just because that was super loud and it just went a bit. Let me just start it again. Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, let's do it again. Um, hey, Frank. So, oh, man, sorry. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. This. <laughs> should just... You should put this on air. It's, it's perfect. I love it. The backstage. It's perfect. <laughs> oh, maybe we will at the end. Okay, cool. I'm going to start again. Right. Okay. Hey, hey, Frank, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, Alan, thank you for calling and inviting me to join the, this uh, wonderful community and this podcast community. I'm really happy. Exactly. Oh, that's awesome. It's awesome to have you part of it. And yeah, thanks for your time in doing this. It's brilliant. And, um, Congratulations on coming seventh in our top 100 photographers of 2019. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm super happy. Uh, I'm really, really happy. I uh, was I was working hard for this, uh, but I was not expecting this for sure because it's a new contest. And I also oh. missed the first one because I was a jury. So I was like, but super happy and also really happy for my friend Fabio Mirula. Um, oh, yeah. He's done brilliantly. He's, uh, he's a brilliant photographer. And he deserves it because the last year has always been in the top three or four. And you know how it is. Usually people just remember the first ones and kind of forget <laughs> the <laughs> guys. So happy for me, but for, uh, really happy for him. He deserves this. No, oh, that's cool. That's really nice. But yeah, so tr tricky for you being a judge in the first one of this year as well. So you can enter then. So, I mean, you've done brilliantly. That's amazing to be seventh. And You've won so many accolades now through so many different bodies over the years. You know, it's amazing. What, what keeps you entering awards um, specifically? So it's a really good question because lately we have like regularly we see all these posts on Facebook kind of, uh, I uh, how you say this in English, but uh, that trigger a lot of reactions and, you know, uh, know what people, because you have kind of two sides, people thinking that the awards thing is just a question of ego and uh, mm. business and whatever. And on the other side, people like, and I am on this other side, but I don't like to divide this in sides, but saying that the award can be uh, really useful. And as I am concerned, uh, taking part of all these wedding awards things is something really important because this is part of my business model. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Uh, I am not a good commercial person. I'm not really good at marketing. You know, I don't work on my SEO all these things. And so by entering contests and by winning awards, I appear in good places in the, in the repertories. I don't know if you say this, you know, oh, like, Oh yeah, I know what you mean. Exactly. So this, 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 this organizations like fearless, for example, for me, is really good because they are really good with SEO. So every year I sign a few weddings to these organizations. So first of all, super important for me for this it brings me visibility. And also, I love to teach and I love to give conferences because I've been doing this for 10 years now. I coach people also, professional photographers. I organize my workshops. I am invited to organize workshops. And actually, I'm able to do this now because I've been winning awards the last 10 years. So it brought me a lot of visibility. And now that the, the business is so competitive on the, either on the, with to find clients or even I mean, competitive in, in the sense of all these awards and uh, all these uh, conferences all over the place. If I want to keep being visible out there, uh, somehow it's the way I found. I'm not saying it's the best way. I'm not saying this is what we have to do, but this is the way I found. This is the way I enjoy and it, it's working for me. So I keep playing this game and I keep playing this game also because I'm enjoying and I have a lot of pleasure doing this. And I think the word pleasure for me is really something important. That's cool. Oh, yeah, that's brilliant. And I totally agree. It's another kind of, it's a, it's a, it's a very valid marketing tool, which brings a lot of possibilities as well. And do you, do you 
do you get disappointed if, if from a round you don't win? You know, some photographers do feel very down. And, and it's funny for me, you know, running a, a an association and, and sometimes feeling, well, when the results come out, I'm making some people feel bad, you know, and I hate that side. So do you ever feel disappointed <laughs> or do you not think about that? Or Okay, so I'm going to be totally frank with you, honest. I was more disappointed like a few years ago because I was, uh, you know, I was really willing to, to win a lot of things. And now when I don't receive something, of course I am disappointed, but it doesn't last long because for me, I just keep these awards things where it has to belong. I mean, it's just a marketing tool. It mm. has nothing to do with me as a person and as a photographer. So I know it's really hard to divide ourselves between, you know, professional photographer and the personal, per, like the personal human being with an ego, you know, mm. and usually people kind of mix the two things and it can be really hurtful for you. And this is something I, I discuss a lot with a lot of really close friends, even big names in the industry, you know, sometimes about these awards things, even with Rocio a lot of time. Mm. So, yes, sometimes I'm disappointed, but at the end, it doesn't last long. I'm just more motivated for the next ones, because if I strongly believe in my pictures, I know somehow one day they will be rewarded. So I just keep moving on to the next thing and usually it pays off. That's cool. I think that's a great way to look at it. And as you say, if you believe in your images, resubmitting them, because judges change all the time for all the associations. And, and at the end of the day, it's just a few people's opinions, really, isn't it? it Exactly. And, you know, I've always, I've also had the experience as a member of the jury. You know, I kind of were a jury for all the association out there. I was for you, this is reportage. I did it for Fearless, ISP, a lot of contests all over the world. And you know, the thing is, you receive so many pictures, depending on your mood, depending on if it's early in the morning, late at night, what you have to do, the kids, whatever you have to <laughs> do in life. At some point, you just are super focused. Sometimes you are a little bit lazy. Sometimes you are tired. Mm. And it happened so many times to me that when the results were released, I kind of discovered some pictures like, wow, this is an amazing pictures. But I had seen it without seeing it really because maybe at this moment, I was not totally 100% into it, even if I was super focusing to, to do a good job as a jury. But right. we're human beings. And watching and looking through thousands of pictures, at the end, it's really tiring, it's difficult, it's a yeah. job, and you, you might miss things. So yes, for sure, I agree with you. If you believe in your pictures, just keep sending it. Some of my fearless awards or other awards, I got them after sending this for years. I'm not right, telling yeah. you one or two or three times, for years, 10, 12 times sometimes. Wow, yeah. Huh. Uh, that, that's great, I think that's great advice, man. Um, and as, as from being a judge, as you were in, in lots of different competitions, you know, just while you're talking about it, do you have any specific tips for, for people entering, you know, as from, with your judge's eyes? Okay, so we could talk about this for hours, but <laughs> I would say like the, the first one is like kind of logical, but kind of study the kind of contest you are entering in. No, I mean, like the contest have a kind of an identity as a contest, contest itself, you know, like, for example, this is reportage. For sure, when I'm editing a reportage for this is reportage, I know I'm not going to put a post picture or something yeah. that's going to look posed because I know that it's going to be disqualified. I know about it. So the idea is just to be clever and just to, to see the other contest results of this very same contest you want to enter. Mm -hmm. Try to analyze what's working, not working. Try to see if it fits your style or not because not every style is fit for any contest. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah, First, that's true. So first advice, just to try to analyze the, the market of contests. For me, it's a business thing. It's a market thing. So I try to analyze it with a professional eye and not with the ego eye. Okay. The second thing, I would say not for every contest, but the contest I love to enter. And for example, a fearless one, since you know that a lot of people are going to send a lot of pictures, I try to have what I call the, the, uh, the thumbnail effect. What I call this, the thumbnail effect is like, usually people who are going to go through all these pictures, they're not going to go through picture by picture. It's super hard. So usually you have like a mosaic of pictures on your screen mm -hmm. and your eye is going to be attracted by the more graphic pictures, mm -hmm. kind of the most simple to read. So when I'm applying to contests, usually my selection, I put the pictures small on the, on the, on the screen 
I kind of step back, so it's impossible for me to see in details the pictures. But I try to see where my eye goes, so that it's cat the, my attention is catched, caught, sorry, by the most graphic and most attractive pictures on the screen. This is what cool. I call the thumbnail effect. Yeah, oh, that's great. Yeah. Uh, so, second tip, the third tip I would give is like I would divide my selection in three. One third of the selection I would send is really what I love, what I think is really me and I love it. Whatever people think about it, I don't give a shit. I think mm -hmm. I strongly believe it's my things. Like, so it's one third of the selection is something I really strongly believe, whatever people think about it. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. The second third would be like strategically speaking, try to send pictures that you think fit in this, the spirit of the contest you sent. So, by this, I just uh, come back to the first point of analyzing the contest and try to see oh, what kind of pictures maybe, the, I'm not saying copying, okay, but the kind of pictures that usually fits in this contest. So it will be what, the second third of the whole selection. And the third third of the selection would be like, what I advise to do with people is like share with your, your colleagues share with your friends, you know, but professional photographers, you believe who are going to be hard on you if they think that your pictures are not good. Try to share a maximum of, uh, of picture with them and see which pictures people like the most. So this is just a statistic approach. And by mixing these three approaches together, I think you enhance the chances, statistically speaking, to hit the, to hit the goal. Wow, man, that's just brilliant advice. That is such, such good uh, wealth of tips there. That is so good. Thank you. I think that's brilliant. I think people will find that really, really interesting. Okay, maybe. Hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's awesome. And it's obviously worked for you. Obviously, it's not just your system and how you approach it. You have to have, be a really good photographer, but it, it's helping you, that kind of system. So I think that's yeah. brilliant. Thank you. Yes, and, and you know, this year I wanted to, I played again a lot of, I, I sent a lot of pictures again this year and, uh, for contest because I, the last year I was a little bit, uh, I won things, but not uh, uh, as much as I wanted because I didn't play the, the, the whole thing. I was missing deadlines. I was not focusing on this. And I kind of wanted to be back in the game for many reasons. Yeah. And this year, this strategy and plus my work, uh, for sure, I think it's, uh, it, it worked really well because I, uh, I, I won a lot of things. I placed kind of well in uh, the things I, I wanted to place. So, yes. It's, it, it worked for me at least, so I'm sharing it. Again, I'm not saying it's the truth. Everyone has his own way to do, but for me it worked. And if I can share it, you know, and can apply it to your own uh, approach and mixing with your own feelings and intuition. That is awesome. Honestly, thank you for sharing that. I think that is brilliant. That really is. Um, so let's go back to, so I think a long time ago now, quite a long time ago, you used to teach French, was it, at the University of California, San Diego? Oh, yeah, a long time ago. It's a, okay, <laughs> let's be clear. I'm still a young guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at last in my heart, in my mind, in my soul. <laughs> but yes, 20 years ago, I was living in San Diego and I was, uh, I was a, a French teacher at, on the campus at UCSD. Wow, cool. And you got into photojournalism there, did you? Exactly. This is at the, this very time, very same time that I discovered photojournalism, like by at sneaking in a photojournalism class because my <laughs> uh, my girlfriend, my first wife, Elsa, she was a student there. Oh, cool. And she was attending many, many different classes. And among these classes, there was this photojournalism classes. And kind of by chance and by curiosity, because I'm a really curious person, I love to learn new things. I was like, oh, let's sneak in and let's see what's going on here. <laughs> And for me, it was like, it was like slap in my face. I was like, oh my God, this is, this is what I have been thinking of unconsciously without knowing about it. Were you and into photography at all at that time? Or? Not at all. Yeah, Absolutely right. not at all. Like a few years before this, I was trying to make some pictures like, like this with a camera because my dad has been a photographer all his life, but it was not like yeah. a passion or something. And this was not photojournalism. I didn't know about this thing. But when I, I saw this, when I listened to this guy talking about this, and when I, I started to look into books and going to exhibitions, and it's, it was a new world for me. It was like the Matrix, you know, like, <laughs> wow, my God. 
I had I had swallowed the right the right pill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool. And then 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 how did you get from there to starting your own um, photography career then? So from this beginning, I started to grab a camera and to to take as as many pictures as possible of anything. I was shooting insects. I was doing landscapes. I was shooting objects. I was just trying to understand how photography was working and about light, about about anything, basically. And I was really, really bad, you know. I was, you know, I was living in, in the US, so I was using cheap, uh, cheap cameras, cheap lenses, cheap films. Mm-hmm. I was going to Costco to develop my film because it was cheap. I was broke at this time, with no money. <laughs> and at the end, I was like, why my picture doesn't look like the pictures in National Geographic? <laughs> I don't get it. I did everything I had to do, you know. It was, I did not understand. <laughs> and so from this, I really was willing to learn as many things as possible, as quick as possible. And when I came back to France, I was, uh, I was trying to, to, to do my, my pictures. And right away, I started to do documentary pictures. And I had a chance to, to find and to meet the right people. And I created an agency that is still going on there. And now it's a collective item. Wow, cool. I'm still a member, but I'm far from the organization now and all these things because I'm not doing this, the, the photojournalism anymore. I'm much more on long-term projects. Right. But this is, this is one of my baby. You know, I created this with other photographers. And so from the very beginning, I was, I, I just, how do you say, I was, uh, I dive into it. I don't know oh, what yeah. to say. The past yeah, no, past. that's good. Yeah. And, um, and I gave 150%, you know. And so... Also, from the very same time, I switched to wedding photography because at this time, I was in the age where your close friends around you start to get married. Mm. And really naturally, they were asking me, you know, Frank, we're getting married. Of course, we're looking for photographers. You are starting into photography. What about you shooting a wedding? And I was like, why not? You know, I was curious <laughs> and I was as excited to shoot uh, to shoot birds and insects in the grass <laughs> and shooting people getting married. You know, I was like, yeah, 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 let's give it a try. <laughs> and what was that and, like? Uh, that very first? What was that and like? I lo- and I loved it. Oh, and I loved cool. it from the very beginning. Wow. And that was on film then, I guess. Again? Oh, oh, was oh, that on film? Sorry, your first wedding? Was oh, it- yes, yes. My five first seasons were on film. Wow. So I had to develop my films. I have to scan my films. I have to, oh my God, it was such a lot of work. It was crazy. But yes, I started with film, and it was a really, really good school to learn techniques. Right? Yeah, I bet. I can't. Have you ever thought about doing it now? Going shooting a wedding in film now? Yes, I've actually no. It doesn't excite me that much. But if I do it, I will do it in medium format. Okay, cool. To even slow down even more the the process of it. But no, because. Uh, Okay, I love film, I love slides, but I was not like, wow. No, for me, my camera and the films were just a tool. And when the digital cameras uh, came along, it was just more convenient, faster. I'm not a geek guy. I'm not like, uh, absolutely, I want to use all cameras or this. I don't, honestly, I don't give a shit about this thing. Mm-hmm. This is just a tool that allows me to express what I have to express to say. Yeah. But I'm not like kind of nostalgic of, all the old theme things but if i do it again maybe it will be even with a large format camera something totally different from what we can do with a digital that'd be cool i look forward to see it you gotta do it <laughs> <laughs> yeah so let, let's change tax just slightly um what's your favorite netflix or other streaming service Ooh, TV i series? knew you were but i knew you were going to a series but i didn't think about it but <laughs> okay i would say like i think somebody said about this maybe alan already but uh so I'm not the kind of people, person that has his favorite thing, you know, his favorite song, his favorite band or whatever. It's really hard for me to just to cut it down to one, only one. Yeah. But I think <laughs> one of the series that really struck me and I love, it's Peaky Blinders. Oh, yes. That was set in Birmingham uh, where I'm from Birmingham, actually. <laughs> oh, my God. Just uh, the story. The guy is so charismatic. The story, yeah. the light, it's just, uh, it's just amazing. And everything, the energy, the music. Mm, so I think it was, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I you was know, it's not really like that in Birmingham though. Have you ever been to uh, <laughs> Oh, really? Shit. <laughs> not quite. <laughs> no, but I would say yes. Let's, if we have to keep one, I would see the, the, the Peaky Blinders. And after I have many, many other ones, but this is what, what struck me, I think, oh, lately. 
That's cool. Well, nice one. Yeah, it is great. I, I haven't seen the last most recent series, actually. I need to. Have you seen them all? Oh, yes. You know, when it's released, it's like I'm, uh, I'm like uh, everybody going, everybody, I'm just like in two nights, I'm watching uh, seven or eight in a row, you know. So, <laughs> oh, that's cool. I am ma- binging. We call this binging, I think. Binging, right? yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the main guy, he's so, is it Cillian Murphy, is it, or Killian Murphy? But he's so charismatic. He's so oh, cool. Oh, my God. And, you know, I'm a stray guy, but I find him so beautiful. His yeah. eyes. His presence, oh my God, this is something, huh? Yeah, it's so true. You know, it's Proper like, cool. wow, you know, I just love it. <laughs> and the funny thing is like, when I was trying to look for this guy, you know, usually when you, when someone is like starting to, he's starring in a movie, but uh, you kind of, kind of just discover this person, either an actress and a woman or a guy. And I yeah. love just to try to find a, but to know a, a bit more about this person. And this is where usually you say, oh, but I have already seen this guy in these movies, in this series, and you kind of forgot about it because they didn't have the manual. Uh, yeah. But this guy, this guy is all, he's not a new, he's not a new being, you know, in a business. But it's the first time that I really saw him on the screen like this. Yeah. It's and really, he's really amazing. He yeah, yeah. So what, okay, first thing that comes to your mind, what makes you happy? <laughs> okay, what what's makes me happy? Many, many things. Same thing, it's not only one thing. That's cool. And the thing is, what makes me happy, it's many things, okay? It's a balance between all the different aspects of my life. So I am happy, I would say on the long run, when all the different compartments of my life are kind of balanced. My personal Mm -hmm. life with my daughter, my personal relationship with Rocio, my relationship with my close family, my parents, when I feel I am good with my clients and I have good feedbacks with my clients, when I'm good with myself in my body, when I'm doing good in my sports, for example, and also when I'm good with my friends, I, can, I feel like I'm doing what I have to do. When I feel I am not missing something because I am overwhelmed, when I, I feel that I am really balanced in all these aspects of my life. And I've been working really hard on this. So this is one way of doing this, of like approaching your question. Another way would be more on the, for me, I'm happy. Happiness is not, uh, happiness is just a succession of happy moments. Mm. And the more happy moments I have in my life, the happiest I am. And it's a funny question because for the first time this year, I did a a mood board with my daughter. Oh, cool. You know, it's a board and every day I just, uh, I, I, I just color like some squares, like saying, how was the day? Was it a bad day, a normal day, a really good day, an amazing day? Okay. And I've been doing this for the, since the beginning of this year, only 2019, to see how oh, is my life on a really kind of rational way of looking at it. Ah. And, uh, and it's nice. Basically, it, was, it has been a really good year. Oh, that's but, cool. Yeah, it's, it's really nice. We did it with my daughter, so it's a nice way to share because sometimes the same day for her, it's normal. For me, it's really good. So we say, Oh, why do you think it's bad for you or not that good? Because for me, I experience it this way. So it's really nice. But just to, keep, to go back to, to your question, for me, it's a succession of good moments. And something, sometimes I have what I call perfect moments, where you don't have anything to add and the, the moment is perfect. And I am really aware of these moments. And when they happen, it's like a flow, state of mind. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is what makes me happy. And I'm looking forward to having more and more flow moments like this in my life oh man that's cool that's yeah that's a lovely answer all around that's that's really nice and you sound very happy oh i am a really happy person that's cool very cool yeah it's not I, okay sorry uh maybe we'll talk about this later it's not always like this i'm like anybody else but most of the time i'm really happy yeah cool and we will touch yeah definitely touch upon that in a minute um and you you mentioned there about rocio so your partner is a fellow very talented also uh, wedding photographer, Rocio Vega. Um, what's it like being in a relationship with a fellow wedding photographer? You know, are you, are you competitive with each other or, you know, how did you meet? What's it like? <laughs> wow, wow, so many questions. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay, let's have two hours to talk about this. No, I'm going to, I'm going to try to be, to, to be quick on this. It's an amazing relationship, both personal and, uh, and professionally speaking. It has been the, the best relation I've ever had in my life so far. That's cool. And uh, and we're working hard to keep going on this. 
And uh, yes, an amazing person. It's an amazing photographer. And uh, I know people know about her, but I think she deserves even more because uh, she she's a really hard worker. She has improved a lot lately, the last years. She has a really, really strong work focused on moments, relations, people. Technically speaking, she's amazing. And I know about it because we work more and more together. So she has her business. I have my business. She lives in Spain. I live in France. But the more we can share professionally, the more we try to do. And so I, I have been working with her, alongside with her, like uh, shooting with her on weddings where I went for her, or she came along with me as a second shooter, or weddings we sold together as a couple wedding photographers. Oh, cool. Okay. And I see situations where I was stuck. I was like, no, like, I don't know. I reached my limits here, technically speaking. And she always have solutions, most of the time with the flashes. And she's just, just, just amazing. And I've learned a lot alongside with her. Uh, about photography and about uh, human relationships. And uh, this, I think what allowed me to improve also my photography lately, it's not so much about technical things, but still about the flash, than about relations and to be, and to have more empathy for people and what people feel and to be even better in the storytelling. That's very cool. And it must and be... To- Sorry, no, you go on. Yeah, yeah, I'm just sorry. And for the competing thing, yes, we're competing, but in a really nice way. Like, I wouldn't say competing, but we're pushing each other. I'm a really demanding person. You know, <laughs> I am really demanding with myself and with people around me who ask me for this. And I am pushing her really hard. <laughs> and like, I'm trying to push myself. So we, we, we try to push ourselves to be the better versions of ourselves. At the same time as persons, but as photographers, we want to to keep pushing, pushing. We we, we really strongly believe that we never never reach any place. It's an endless process and we want to keep it this way. That's awesome that you both keep pushing yourselves like that. That's brilliant. Um, It must be quite nice to get home um, after a wedding or when you see each other and being being able to discuss it in detail you know like I talk to my wife but I think sometimes she gets a little bit bored <laughs> she's like, it must be cool being in the same industry and being able to talk about it like that oh yes we love it and you know every single time at the wedding the wedding the wedding day is over and we work together the first thing we do the very first thing we do is like okay where we what do what did we miss today what do we do with screw up and why? And what kind of solutions we're going to find so that next time we're going to be better? And That's we love right. it. It's every single time we, we, we finish a wedding and we're like, and every single wedding we miss things. And every single wedding we, we see that we still, we keep, we have to keep improving because we're not ready all the times, technically, mentally, whatever. We don't get exactly, exactly what we want. So this is really nice moments. And, just, I'm going to share something with you, okay? It's a little story. Okay, cool. <laughs> just as an illustration, just to how crazy we are about, about photography and <laughs> we, we constantly talk about this. Like two years ago, we were in, um, in Amsterdam to shoot a, a wedding, her wedding. It was a gay, a gay couple. She was shooting cool. and she invited me. And so we, I had a chance to, to go with her and to shoot this wedding. It was Amsterdam, so we were smoking some pots. <laughs> nice. nice. So it put us in a really nice state of mind. I, I, it was one or two in the morning. <laughs> and suddenly I like, oh, let's look at the Fearless Award, the first Fearless Awards, round number one. And so two in the morning in Amsterdam, after <laughs> shooting the whole day, we started to, to look at all these pictures and to, to analyze the pictures and to talk about photography. You know, we were exhausted, wow. we were high. <laughs> just to to tell you how excited we are and passionate we are about photography. <laughs> that is cool. That is awesome. That is so cool. <laughs> nice. And so, so in general, what does it in general what does it mean to be successful to you? You know, you've been in, in it a long time and won every as I said before awards everywhere. And um, you know, do you still suffer like a lot of us do from imposter syndrome, self doubt, or you know, yeah, what's it? Yeah. What's it like yeah, for you? Totally, it's a really good question and you know we talk a little bit before this interview together and uh, this is something I've been thinking a lot lately uh, uh, because the notion of being successful is so relative so subjective Mm -hmm. you know and I I don't okay how how to put this together okay you can be successful commercially speaking 
you know, run a good business. This is not my case. So on this perspective, I'm not successful because my business, I'm doing okay, but I'm not super good commercially speaking. There is a lot of things I don't do, I should do, I know, but I don't do these things. So I'm not successful in this aspect. Mm -hmm. For example, I'm not working with wedding planners or with uh, venues and I'm not successful doing this and I'm bad doing this, so I'm not successful. Maybe I have some visibility because I win awards and I've been winning, uh, winning awards for the last 10 years. And I want to keep doing these things, as I explained to you, because this is part of my business model. So mm -hmm. I might be successful in this sense, but successful in this sense doesn't mean that it always makes uh, makes me feel happy or feel that it's done. I have reached something, and I am I'm I'm super good. I don't have to learn things, or I don't have any doubts. This is not the case at all. Right. Uh, I'm happy. I believe in myself, I believe in my photography, I know where I'm, I'm good at, but I also have a lot of doubts about me as a photographer, about my business, because the business, at least for me, and I'm really honest with you, it's not really easy lately, it's harder and harder to book weddings. I'm expensive, right, I'm not sure. the most expensive one, but I'm not the cheapest, ones, uh, cheapest, cheapest one either. <laughs> yeah. And it has been really, really hard. So sometimes, you know, you have a good contact with the clients, some prospects, and at the end, they don't book you. And even if you believe in you, at the end, you, you always have good reasons to doubt, you know, why? What's happening? Why I didn't sign this one? I don't understand. Mm. And it has, it's happening more and more, this thing. It's happening more and more. So the notion of successful, it's so relative. You know, at the end, we're going to, finish all the same somehow mm -hmm, that's so, true yeah i don't attach a lot of importance to this thing to to be honest i think well that's great man i think people would be you know so interested in that as well and it's i think it's difficult for everyone out there do you have you noticed the um the industry changing since you began you know how it oh, is yeah 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 totally you know i've been a wedding photographer for 20 years and so wow. i've i've seen a <laughs> so lot long. yeah i've i've seen a lot of, a lot of changes, and lately I would say the last, roughly the last five years, but even the last two years, you have a lot of newbies. The average level is so high now. Mm. The prices are kind of low, and you you still have the same number of weddings. So people like uh, if you are a couple, uh, you know, to that is going to 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 get married, you have m more and more services in front of you, and it's so hard to to make a choice now. And so, yes, I've seen the, the business change a lot for the, for the best in some aspects, but for, not for the worst, but not for so good things also for, the, the, for some aspects uh, also. Mm. But, I mean, uh, this is like this, and we have to adapt and to adjust mas uh, ourselves. You know, I'm not saying like, oh, it's a, the all good times, it was like this, and, you know, <laughs> doing my things, and uh, whatever happens, happens, and I'm not going to change anything. No, yeah. I mean, the market is like this, the time is changing, and I want to keep being uh, faithful to myself, but also I want to, be, to keep in, improving and, and growing as a photographer so that in 10 years ahead, I'm going to still be there because I want to be there. And uh, let's meet in 10 years because I know I'm going to be out there because I, I know I'm going to keep improving my photography. I want to keep improving my services for my clients, mm -hmm. and I'm going to be there somehow. But for this, I need to be to be sensitive about how the market is evolving and what people maybe want or not want anymore yeah. and try to, to write to find a right balance between this and keep being faithful to who I am as a photographer. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, it is, it's a roller coaster, this industry, isn't it? How you touched upon how oh, yeah. sometimes we'll meet people and they don't book us. Sometimes they do. And we don't, sometimes we're wondering why, or where is our next booking going to come from? And I think it's good for people to know that, you know, someone like you has been doing it so long and is so well known. We, you're going through the same things as, as, as like exactly, everyone. Does. Exactly. And, you know, I am traveling a lot for my weddings and conferences. And so and I love to talk about this specific topic. And mm. every single person I know in the world, whatever the, your level, has the same problems. You know, the ghosting thing. You yeah. know, people contact you. Oh, you're an amazing photographer. I love your photography. Please, I saw this. It's amazing. Can you send us? You send things, links, and you like you know I'm using more and more WhatsApp, so you see that people see your <laughs> your message, and they don't answer. So like, okay, you let one, two days, two days after, hey guys, how are you doing? You know, you contacted me, 
I would be happy to talk to you and still this message, don't answer you. And and this is happening to absolutely everybody out there. Yeah. So definitely. if it's happening to you, just be sure, even the big names in the industry, maybe some people don't say it, mm. but either they are like amazing, amazing business <laughs> person or they are big liars. Because yeah. <laughs> as I'm concerned, I, I, I go through the same things exactly like anybody else in the in the in the business. Cool. Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah. That ghosting thing is it has become more and more frequent, isn't it? It's bizarre. It's oh my God, it's so weird. Mm. And you know, like, okay, just another little story. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I like stories. Stories are good. <laughs> no, but uh two days ago I was like just taking my phone and I wanted to kind of clean my phone with uh, old phone numbers. You know, from time to time I do this, like say. Okay, these people, uh, do I need this num phone number or not anymore? You know, it's a way for me to clean my head also emotionally. Okay. So I was going through all these phone numbers. And now when some clients contact me, they have to put their phone numbers. And the first thing I do, I send a message through WhatsApp. So I need to, I need to register the, the phone numbers in my phone. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it means for the last two years, I have all the contacts of the people who contacted me for a wedding. So I had a lot of conversations on WhatsApp. And so for me, I was like checking the phone numbers, seeing if I have to keep this in the phone number or not. And so I was checking the WhatsApp conversation I had with these people. And I had like dozens and dozens of WhatsApp conversations with these prospects of people contacting me and nice chats and all these people not booking me. Like <laughs> some booked for sure. And, and, and it's nice. But so many didn't book and I was mm. going through all these things and it was a perfect illustration of this ghosting thing. It was just amazing and uh, the good thing about this industry and also to share with people you know your your friends around you who also are wedding photographers is like you can see that you are not the only one involved so mm. you don't take it personally but because when it's happening to you and you you don't know that it's happening to everybody else this ghosting thing you take things really personally at the yeah, end and you start so to doubt about yourself and mm. it's really really bad and when you associate this with the awards things when people start to to interview the awards and you don't win awards or sometimes <laughs> yes but sometimes no and people don't answer your things your calls and your messages you start to to doubt mm. and really deep inside you doubt and this is bad and so people please don't doubt about yourself if these things happen because they happen i think it's not happening only in the wedding industry i think it's a question of time being people are running out of time mm, people are true are offered so many options in all aspects of life now yeah. that uh, are overwhelmed with information. And this is just a question how to deal with all this information, this information. And us as wedding photographers, when they contact us, the information we send them is another layer of information. And like anybody else, people have limited amount of time and they make choices. But uh, when you are concerned by this, it's super hard to deal with it. Mm. Oh, that's so true and a great way to look at it though it's like a very level level-headed way of looking at it though i think um yeah and knowing that everyone's going through it and not not feeling down it's not to do with you personally yeah exactly nothing personal guys nothing i have to say to myself also sometimes it's hard but this is this is just the truth it's nothing personal this is the time being and the time being not in even in the, in france or in england and it's all over the world these yeah. things happen in canada in Argentina, in Colombia, in the US, in Italy, where like all these places I have friends and I talk about this, this is exactly the same. It's happening all over the world. Yeah. Do you think we take it more personal because, you know, as wedding photographers, we're really a kind of one man or a one woman business. You know, we do everything. We're putting our heart into the work. We're showing our work all the time. We're doing all the answering of the emails. We're meeting people. So it's a very a one man thing. So it's, it's quite hard not to take personally, isn't it? Oh, yes. And you know, this is photography. This is uh, okay. I, I talk from my, uh, I talk from my perspective, but uh, I do documentary, you know, so uh, I talk about people, I document mm. people's life, you know, important moments. And I put myself into these things, you know, so yes, this is personal. This is not selling normal services or mm. some objects or whatever. You know, some kind of retailers of whatever objects, goods, you make money out of it. Mm -hmm. No, it's not this. That's true. We, 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 we give much more than photography. At least this is what I try to do. And so, yes, we take it personally because at the end, 
it's so difficult to be a photographer and to be a, a single business person, mm. as you said, and everybody knows, you know, you always have these charts on Facebook, like what people think as you as a wedding photographer and what the reality is, you know, between mm -hmm. the time you shoot, the time you finally, you have to deal with everything, administration, marketing, you know, post-production, blah, 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 blah. And at the end, you should choose between five to 10% of the time. Mm -hmm. So yes, it is, it is difficult. And yes, we take things personally, but we have to, we have to, to maintain a certain distance with this because it can be really killing. And I see a lot mm -hmm. of people and even friends around me, really close ones that they are about to, to drop, you know, and just right, to switch yeah. to something else because it's too, too difficult to handle. Mm -hmm. Mm. Ah, funny side of time. funny state of things isn't it but yeah we're just going to take things not so personally i think you're, you're really you're really right um you you mentioned on your website which is something i really i loved about the import <laughs> <laughs> no, but you did you mentioned on your website about the importance oh of God. um trust that your clients have in you so you know you can then have the freedom to create images that tell the story of their day and i agree with you that that trust in you is so important um you know can you tell us more about that how how you gain the your clients trust you know any tips for yeah that? sure so i am really really bad with my website i haven't updated it for five years i saw so it looks <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's a catastrophe I, I don't blog the only thing i do but not even perfectly it's instagram but still oh, cool. i am late with uh, my posting but so i'm really bad with this uh right now we're working on a new website with rocio because we want to launch a, a common brand oh, so cool. we're working on it but so the question of the the trust it's, this is why I send messages to, to WhatsApp because for me, the first contact on the phone is super, is crucial for me. Right. This is where I need to connect with my clients. And the way I connect with my clients, the way I gain trust and I build trust is from the very beginning by being super honest. And so I'm really honest with my clients. I'm just explaining why I'm a photographer. Why do we sing? Why I'm passionate? Why, what are my struggles? And why, what I love, what I don't like? And I'm sharing with my clients, but first, I need to know who these people are. So the first thing to gain their trust is to ask questions and to be truly interested in who they are so that I can see if these people fit my, 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 my view of the perfect client or not. And uh, once the first uh, step is like to know a little bit about the, the, the wedding couples and the, the people, about their weddings, their personal history, how they met, blah, 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 they fell in love, what's important for them, about is photography is important, is art important. This is where I step in and I explain myself a little bit what you were asking me before, like, oh, I started photography, why I loved it, why it makes sense to me. Mm. And this is super important for me because uh, I want my life as a person and as a professional photographer to be meaningful. I want to feel I contribute to something. So I am passionately and truly and honestly sharing my views about life and photography with my clients. And when it fits, when, when there is a connection, this is a really strong connection and usually these are my clients. But if it doesn't connect, they are not my clients. But this is hard to connect at this level because not everybody likes my style, not everybody Mm. is ready to to talk about really personal things on a philosophical point of view because some people don't understand why a photographer is going to ask these things and is sharing so personal things. Mm. But I don't care. I don't care because uh, by experience, and for example, I experienced this two days ago again with a client and I have a meeting this afternoon just to finalize the contract. The more honest I am with my clients, the best the connection is. That's cool. It's, 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 yes, yes. And I, I remember last, last year in January, I was super mega happy. It was a really good time for me. I was like, I know I was super bumped up, pumped, bumped up, you know, super wow, full of energy. <laughs> and I have this interview with my clients. The first calls were lasting two and three hours. I was three hours wow. on the phone with them. And wow. I was walking sometimes in the streets, you know, and I was talking with passion about life, sharing things. And the guys, they were friends at the end. And, you know, like, and, uh, I'm just going to read you the message of my clients. Like, I'm going to have this, you know, another story. I, I like it's concrete. Oh, you cool. Yeah. His name is Jean Christophe. Okay. And uh, I sent him a, yesterday. So I was like asking, did you see all the elements, you know, all the contents and links I, I sent you? 
And uh, he answered, yes, we almost look at everything. We just love it. It's why the question is not, uh, it's not now if we're going to shoot with you, for sure. It's like how we're going to do it because we want to work with you. That's cool. And this is because of this. So I hope it's answering your question about the trust. But totally. So just to summarize it, be as honest as possible about you and your photography as possible with your clients. Don't try to sell a service. Don't try to sell yourself. Just try to share your, your way of being as a human being and your opinion and your, your view on life and on photography. And this is the best way to connect on a personal level. That is super advice, man. Thank you. That's great. Awesome. You're welcome. Um, let's change tack slightly again. So um, say if you had 24 hours totally to yourself to do whatever you wanted and money was no object, what would you do? You know, the thing is, I, I love this question, but actually my, my philosophy of life and my choices of life uh, allow me to do this quite often. Oh, okay. Well, that, that's great yeah. there, isn't it? That's yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I am not lying. This is totally true. I, as I told you, I really try to find a balance in my life. I have a little girl, 10 years old, mm -hmm. but I am divorced. So I have her 50% of the time. Right. It means that every other week, I have free time for one week. Most of the time, I'm traveling because, uh, you know, we, with Rocio, we have projects, I'm shooting, I'm doing all those things. Mm -hmm. But I have a lot of free time for myself, and I allow myself. I give myself the freedom to do these things. So I'm going to give you an answer, but it's not like an answer like in an ideal world or life because this is already what I do. Okay, that's cool. But I, I, I built it. I thought about it and I built it. And uh, I, I, I built my business around this philosophy of life. So to give you an answer straight, it's what I do usually every week. The perfect 24 hours for me is like walk a little bit. Like uh, on some things I really love, like some pictures, I'm going to work on a picture post-production. I'm going to make a picture look better. I'm going to discover a picture. I'm really happy about it. Once I am fed up with it, I don't know exactly in advance how long I'm going to spend time, but I just spend as much time as at, at some point I don't want to do it anymore. It can be five minutes, 10, one hour, two, two hours. I don't care. I'm not counting the time. I'm not saying I'm going to do this, 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 absolutely. I'm going to spend one hour doing this. No. So I do this. But the common point is always pleasure. After, what I love to do is also, I love to do sports. So I love to go running out there. Okay. So when I am in the mountain, because I have a house in the mountain, I just go running one, two or three hours, enjoying nature, enjoying my body. Wow, that's a, long, that's a long time to run though. Yeah, but, but, but this is what I do. I, I run in tra uh, trails, so I, 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 I train a lot and I, I, I love doing these things. Uh, okay you know i just started running i just can't huh? get, i can't see the enjoyment in running yet at all i really can't uh, but it will come it will come <laughs> little by little but believe me it will come at some point you have this flow feeling and when it happens this is just amazing okay really so just gonna... keep doing it they yeah, keep doing and uh, always pleasure don't push too, too much little by little and little by little you push the limits and after a while you just start to enjoy really plainfully but it takes a little okay. while yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna hope. I'm gonna hope you're being truthful. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I would go running, do my sports, come back home, take a shower, go to the movies for sure. This is really my ritual, my routine. I go okay. to the movies myself, just love it. And after I would go, just walk in the city, read, go to a bar, read a little bit, take notes, whatever. Let, let my my mind flow, have ideas, look for things. And after I would go to, to eat a nice restaurant, all alone, all by myself. I love this. Oh, do you? Yeah. Oh, oh cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. I love, I'm a sociable person, but I'm also a wolf. And I love enjoying my time for me. I love it. This is That's where cool. I am more creative. And I will, I don't know, I will maybe visit a friend or come back home and read again because I love to read, watch a series. And that's it. This is. That sounds great. And it sounds like you're having a lot of that anyway then. So yeah, when, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. when we spoke about success earlier, you could say how you're so successful because you're living a very happy life and kind of doing what you want to do, really. Oh, exactly. This is my choice. So I'm not making a lot of money, you know, and yeah. I could make much more money. I don't live in a big house. I don't have an expensive car, expensive clothes. But these things are not important for me. And again, when I'm saying this, guys out there, 
I'm not saying you have to do this. Absolutely not. You know, I totally understand people who have other goals in life. And it's totally fine with me. But these are my goals and I'm really clear about it now. And uh, yes, but again, I work really hard for this. It took me 15 years and two divorces. <laughs> so I paid, I paid a price also to know what I wanted and not what I didn't want anymore. Right. Yeah. Well, you've got it sorted now, man. It sound, you do sound really, really happy. It's great. It's really cool. <laughs> um, let's change again slightly. Can, can you remember a specific occasion, like a wedding or otherwise, that you were really nervous or stressed about? I mean, do you still get nervous shooting weddings or is, do you not anymore? So, no, I am like, I, and I think, who said this? Maybe Alan again, or I don't know who else in the podcast, but no, it's like getting on stage. Uh, I'm not nervous. I'm a really enthusiastic person, passionate. I have a, I'm full of energy. So I would say it's more excitement. I'm right. excited to go. I'm willing to go. You know, I, am, I have a competitive mind, but not in the sense of I, I'm going to crush people around me. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's competitive mind with myself. You know, I want to test myself to see if what I have been thinking of, what I've been training for, if it's paying off. So it's, it's between me and me. So I'm really excited to, to be confronted with this. So either for going to speak on stage in front of two or 3,000 people or 10 people or going to shoot a really important wedding with a high budget. I'm not stressed. I'm not stressed. I'm excited. I'm really excited. But sometimes you have some difficult situation like anybody else. Mm -hmm. But in this moment, I try to switch this tension this problem to action right away. I really want to switch to a small action right away. So that, okay, let's start to, let's start something about it. I don't want to, to feel like I'm stuck, like a rabbit, you know, in the, in the cars. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, you see these uh, beams of lights, you know? Like, oh yeah, uh, like rabbit, rabbit in the headlights. Uh, rabbit, yeah. Exactly, yeah. rabbits yeah. in the headlights. No, I don't want this. So. I switched to small little actions that allow me to, to start all over again my thing and to be again in a really active process to, to, to be able to, to deal with the situation I am in, kind of maybe a little bit stressful. But no, most of the time I'm not stressed. I can be stressful for people around me because I'm dynamic, I'm pushy, I, 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 I'm bossy sometimes, so it's kind of painful sometimes for people around me. <laughs> that's quite, that's yeah. quite self-aware, that's funny. Yeah, but I know, I know myself, so I know it's like this, and I'm, uh, I'm aware of this, so I'm warning people, say, you know, guys, I know myself, I'm going to be like this, so it's not personal, it's like me, so so it's the same way with Rocio, you know, I'm telling you, like, just let me know when it's too much, because I know I'm like this, I'm not going to say, no, it's not true. <laughs> right, no, that's cool. <laughs> have you have you made any kind of really memorable mistakes at a wedding at all? Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Not that many, I think. But so one big mistake I did, and the funny thing is, like every time I do a mistake, I try to learn from it, and usually I never repeat it twice. Right. So one good. of the big mistake I did is like I was it was I was out of the church. The ceremony was over. The couple was about to get out. They were about to, to throw confetti, so I'm all, I was already, you know, from far, standing on I don't know what chair or something up there with my long lens. I was in a, in a burst mode. I was already, you know, really ready. It was amazing. And I was like, like, they get out. I had only one camera this time. They go out. I start bursting with my camera. Boom. Card memory full. Oh, Card man. Memory full. <laughs> ah! the, time, the time I changed it, it was over, so I missed uh, getting out of church. Oh, no. And it was amazing. It was, uh, oh, my God, I was furious against myself. And I promised myself from this very same time that now, regularly on a wedding day, I'm checking many things. But the first thing I'm checking is if I have battery and if I still have a lot of memory, enough memory for the, the moments to come. So every time I'm going to shoot a key moment of the day, like say the vows or getting in a church, getting out, whatever, something super important. I'm checking these two things. My settings, the battery, I have enough cards, the white balance. Right. Because I don't want to screw up at this moment anymore. So yes, yeah. this is one of the big things I, I missed. <laughs> That's cool. And we all do it. And it's just learning from it, isn't it? We all do it all the time. Well, not all the time. You learn from it and you get better. You don't do it. That's funny. Yeah. Um, 
So I think we've got we've got time just for like one more question, and it's quite. A, I, I like this question because it's quite interesting. Different people's opinions. What, in your opinion, makes a good wedding photographer? Do you think? Okay, so I have many answers to this question. Sorry, Alan. It's That's like, okay. Honestly, take as much time. Yeah, so. it's like the notion of successful. Mm. So on a on a commercial uh, perspective, what makes a good wedding photographer? Could be a photographer who is really good with. Uh, He's a professional in, in the sense of he does he, he knows how to, to take pictures, whatever the style, you know, whatever the level. He's he's good at it. He's good with his business. He's good with selling himself, marketing himself. He has a good relations and network, and he has a good business. So for me, it would be one notion, one way to look at it as a good wedding photographer. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is not my way because I'm, <laughs> as I told you, I'm not good with marketing and commercial things. Mm -hmm. Another way to look at it would be a good wedding photographer is a wedding photographer who is going to produce truly meaningful memories for his couples. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and for this, I think a true good wedding photographer has to be a person with great human qualities such as empathy. And I think yeah. this is the biggest thing because at the end of the road, like, when you have a documentary approach, you deliver pictures of moments of people. And if you are unable, because you don't have empathy, to feel what the people felt, you, it's not possible for you to deliver these pictures. And these pictures are, are, are going to be meaningless for the people because they are not going to connect with the, the pictures, mm -hmm. even if That's they true. see themselves on the pictures. So I think the main quality is human qualities. It has to be with uh, empathy, modesty, uh, dedication, hardworking, humility, and perseverance. Perseverance. We talked about it, but right now the market is changing, switching. A lot of photographers are getting in, but also a lot of photographers are switching to other kind of photography or mm. getting out of the business. And uh, I think personally, I want to be there in 10 and 20 years. I want to be there. I want to be able to, to, to look back and say, I've been a photographer, wedding photographer for 30 or 40 years. This is my goal because I enjoy doing this. Yeah. And uh, so I'm working within a long run philosophy. So for me, perseverance is also an aspect that is super important because by being perseverant, this is the best way for you to keep improving and to keep being sensitive to the feedbacks that your friends or mainly your clients are going to give you so that you are, you are always, always, always try to better your services so that your clients are even more, you know, happy about what you, what you do as a photographer. Man, yeah, brilliant. I totally agree with all of that. And you're, you're coming from, with such an eye of experience and you already have that business longevity, which a lot of people don't have. So it's so interesting to hear your thoughts on it. Um, man, Frank, honestly, thank you so much for that. Oh, you're welcome. Honestly. It was a pleasure. But honestly, that was brilliant. And you were so open and honest and you gave so many great bits of advice there. I can't, can't thank you enough. That was brilliant. Thank you. No, you're, you're welcome, Alain. It's, it's always nice also to have this kind of moments because uh, even myself, you know, like you have discussions like this and you surprise yourself putting together with new words and new, new ways, well, your thoughts. Because, well, at least me, I'm constantly thinking of my practice and what I do and why I do these things. So it's always nice to have these moments because it's also a way for me to reflect on what I do. So thank you very much for inviting me again. Oh, no, honestly, thank you. Thank you so much. It was awesome. Um, and I'll put links to your, to your website, social media places as well. And um, I'll put all your work will be in the post. If people are listening on iTunes, come to the post on the site on this reportage. Yeah. And see all your work. And... Super. Awesome. The best way, so the best way is not my website, as I told you, because it sucks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's for my Instagram account, but kind of okay. my uh, vitrine now, like because oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a catastrophe. I'm sorry, guys, if you look at it, it's a catastrophe. And I'm <laughs> at this. So please, Alan, Instagram is a bit better. It's not perfect, but it's at least a bit better than my old website. Okay, I will put your Instagram link on there. It's awesome. <laughs> Man, thank you so much, Frank. Thank you so much. Um, and hopefully welcome. I'll see you in 2020, hopefully. But yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, somehow. I don't know if you go somewhere. Like I'm going to be in Bodaife. I'm going to be in Fearless. Oh, uh, cool. So, well, maybe, yeah. 
because I've only briefly met you at Nine Dots a couple of years ago, but it's only for yeah. about a minute, I think. Yeah, I would be really happy to catch up with you and to meet you a little bit longer, more, you know, chat a little bit more, because yeah. I really, I feel you are a really interesting person and I love what you do for the community. And I start, I feel that what you do is starting to, to, to go bigger and uh, it's meaningful. And uh, so thank you very much for this. And I hope you will keep doing this thing also. Thank you. I will. I will keep doing it. I'm really enjoying it. It's really, it's really good fun. Yeah, I enjoy it. Man, thank you so much again. Um, have a great day and I'll see you soon. Thank you, Alan. Have a good day. Thanks for listening to the 12th episode of our This Reportage podcast. I thought Frank was brilliant. So much amazing advice shared, so insightful. Really hope you enjoyed listening too. Head to thisisreportage.com to see a full transcript of this episode along with more of Frank's work and a link to his, yeah, Instagram too. (laughs) If you did enjoy it, you can subscribe to our show on iTunes to be notified when each new weekly episode is ready, bringing you advice, tips and backstories from some of the world's best photographers each week. And if you're not already a member of TIR, check out all the benefits of joining us. We're all about promoting the skill and artistry of documentary wedding photography. And members receive lots of benefits, including 60 reportage award entries and 18 story award entries per year, an unlimited number of images shown on your profile, exclusive discounts on wedding photography related products, invites to our physical meetups and parties, and much more. Collection 13 is open for entries now. Deadline is January 24th, 2020. And this will be the first of our six collections for the year. So if you're interested in possibly making our top 100 photographer list for 2020, now is a great time to join and start entering. No poses, nothing staged. This is Reportage. And this is bye for now. Bye.